and we're seeing nominal performance so far on this second set of hooks. Standing by should be within about a minute or so until this second set opens. That'll be all 12 opened, and there will be no physical mechanism still in place holding Dragon to the International Docking Adapter. We're looking at it attached to the forward port on the station to that uh, docking adapter. As soon as this next set opens within the next minute, Dragon's going to fire a real quick burst again about a second and a half to start backing away and that'll be our physical separation and that'll be our time of undocking. After that initial undocking burn we'll do another one lasting about five seconds to keep backing away and then we'll do a couple of departure burns to eventually bring Dragon uh, out over top of the station around and then underneath. But for now we are all eyes on those on that last set of hooks holding Dragon in place where it's been for more than 150 days attached to this forward port on the space station. Standing by for physical separation. All hooks open. All hooks open to part burn one has fired Dragon Endurance undocked 262 statute miles over and the Coral Dragon sea. SpaceX on the big loop separation confirmed. Second copy, we see it. So a successful separation, again, Dragon undocking at 1.20 a.m. Central Time, 2.20 a.m. Eastern Time with Dragon and Station flying 262 statute miles over the Coral Sea off the northeastern coast of Australia. So with that, Dragon now stepping into Depart these burn Depart zero burns. Zero nominal. Dragon copy. All right, so undock burns completed. That depart burn zero completed. Next one coming up in just a couple of minutes, but with Dragon now flying free, I'm going to toss it back over to Shiva and Leah at MCCX and Hawthorne to take us through the rest of the flight. Thanks a bunch, Dan. So we had some great shots there of the first depart burn. Uh, we're coming up on depart burn. So that was the depart burn zero, and now we're coming up on depart burn number one. Now this will be a short firing of the Dragon's Draco thrusters. The burn just lasting about 16 seconds. You can see that Dragon has begun to fly away from the space station and these initial depart burns essentially increase the range rate from the station so we can get away from the International Space Station and get out of uh, these various different spheres of control uh, around the vehicle that keep both of the vehicles safe. So we uh, heard a call for successful depart burn zero, that 16 second burn. That increases the speed at which Dragon is flying away from the station. It's gonna start to send it up and over the space station. It'll eventually come uh, down and then behind the space station. Uh, this depart burn zero puts crew Dragon Endurance and Nicole, Josh, Koichi, and Anna on their journey home. So there's a good look at where Depart Burn Zero takes us. We'll also be standing by for Depart Burn One. That's another short burn, about 21 seconds. Uh, that's gonna keep us on that trajectory to go over uh, and then eventually down and behind the International Space Station. Depart Burn One is also going to be what's going to send us out of the keep out sphere. Uh, that is an invisible sphere around the International Space Station. It's a boundary, uh, 200 meters in radius. And it helps us determine or helps us um, govern visiting spacecraft arriving or departing the space station. So before moving into that keep out sphere, you have to, ha your spacecraft must be configured so that uh, it would not cross that boundary for at least four orbits, even if for some reason it lost all maneuvering. So we, we monitor that before and after departure. Uh, Crew Dragon continuing to make its way further from the space station. 
We're continuing to get some really cool views from uh, the International Space Station cameras. So this one's got Dragon, and it looks like one of the robotic arms um, in, in the foreground, Dragon in the background. And uh, of course, the, the opportunity today was a little bit delayed from the initial timing. Um, but as a result, it turned out that we had better communications coverage so we could actually get some of these views from the space station. Now, Leah, I really like your explanation of the, the keypad sphere. I, I kind of analogize it to if you've ever flown uh, into a major airport, there's an air traffic control team who's governing who can come into the airport, what timing they should go do that. And the keypad sphere is, is one of those imaginary constructs that allows the flight control teams uh, of the visiting vehicles as well as the, the flight control team in Johnson to make sure that everyone is safe and no one is inadvertently entering to a place that is habited by people. Yeah, and we have a couple of those boundaries. The keep out sphere is the one closer to the space station and the other is the approach ellipsoid. That one is a um, four kilometer by two kilometer, again, an ellipsoid, it's more, uh, it's not as much of a sphere. Um, and it is also an imaginary shape, but it also helps us monitor those arrivals and departures of any and all visiting spacecraft. Um, station on the big loop. Red station. Duke and crew five, magnificent sunset departure. You guys look great. Great job up here. We're going to miss you. Godspeed. Awesome. Thank you, Frank, and the rest of the crew. We'll be following along. Some kind words exchanged between the crew members. Uh, the uh, they were talking about the big loop. So there, that is the way that we refer to the combined communications between Mission Control and Johnson, the International Space Station, visiting vehicle, so Dragon, and then, uh, of course, controllers here in Hawthorne. Yeah, and we were talking about uh, the approach ellipsoid. So what we're in right now where we're talking on that big loop, this is joint operations. Both mission control teams working together with Crew Dragon, with the space or with the space station. Um, and we are actually coming right up on depart burn one. So that's what's gonna take us up and over the station. Um, but yes, it, it must be a little oh, in confirmation that depart burn one has started. Again, this is about a 21 second burn uh, using those service section Draco thrusters. And every once in a while, uh, the thank you, thank you to the ground station uh, or the ground operators on the the Johnson side. They give us some higher Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Depart burn one nominal, and we see Dragon on a nominal trajectory away from station. At this time, you are go to doff suits per procedure 4.012. And finally, I have a reminder that the big loop will be deactivated following Dragon's exit from the approach ellipsoid. And copies and to the teams at NASA and SpaceX, thank you for an incredible expedition that has been your tireless efforts and attention to detail that have helped make this mission successful. I can't tell you how great it feels to be part of such an incredible team. And to the crew on board the International Space Station, you've got it. Make us proud. We'll be following along your mission. And to our friends and family, thank you for following along and being a part of our mission. It has been a privilege to add to the legacy. Semper Fidelis. It is absolutely overwhelming to back away from the International Space Station and gain some perspective on the place we've called home for almost half a year. Station copies, All of us Safe flight. are incredibly proud. So a few things. It's absolutely overwhelming to be back in away from the International Space Station and gain some perspective on the place we called home for almost half a year. All of us on Crew 5 are incredibly proud of the work we've accomplished while we were there. And to everyone who had a role in Expedition 68, whether direct or indirect, you should feel the exact same way. We thank you, and we're excited to get back to that beautiful planet of ours and those wonderful people who live on it. Thank you. That was a beautiful view of the space station. I see it. 
to all the uh, mission control centers all over the world. Thank you very much for your support. It's a privilege and a pleasure to work with all of you at the mission control centers. And uh, it's mission to see a crew, Sergei, Dmitry, Frank, Steve, Woody, Southdown, and Andre. Bon voyage, and we'll be following along. Thank you. Arigato gozaimashita. Pasiba bolsho. I really happy to have that to fail them and, and to be and gone and to get the ball in my life. It's really cool. Thank you very much for everybody. Some words from all, all four Crew 5 members uh, giving a final farewell to the International Space Station as and Dragon Houston on the big loop. Dragon has exited the keep out sphere. We wish you safe travels and looking forward to seeing you back on Earth. I copy, Houston. So we just heard from the Capcom, the capsule communicator uh, in Houston that Crew Dragon has exited the keep-out sphere. That was the imaginary boundary we were talking about just moments ago, 200 meters in radius around the station. One of those safety zones while we are in uh, joint operations that help us uh, monitor any spacecraft arriving or departing. So before moving into the keep-out sphere again, that the rule essentially is uh, you, the spacecraft, if it for some reason lost maneuvering capability, it would not cross into that border for at least four orbits. Uh, but of course, departing, uh, we don't have that same that same uh, requirement. They are now well out of the keep-out sphere and heading toward the approach ellipsoid. Yeah, that's part of the reason why we have all of those flight rules and, and the mission control teams there. Each operator is evaluating their systems to ensure that Dragon is safe to enter uh, both the approach Dragon ellipsoid. Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to ground for suit storage. Go ahead, Jake. Hey, Josh. I've just got a reminder here six months later to store suits with helmet visors closed. How copy? We got it. Thanks a lot for the reminder. Some uh, friendly words from your friendly neighborhood core. Of course, uh, the crew have been on the space station for about six months. So the little quirks of how do you pack things in the vehicle safely to make sure, in this case, that the visors don't get scratched or damaged, just reminding them to keep them closed in the suit bag. <laughs> they do actually get some training on the space station to kind of remind them about uh, some quirks about the vehicle, actions that they need to take during the undock sequence and the departure sequence. So Josh acknowledging that. Everybody needs a refresher every now and then. And again, we are outside of the keep out sphere. We are standing by for approach ellipsoid exit. That's a four kilometer by two kilometer uh, invisible boundary again. And once we are out of the approach ellipsoid, that ends joint operations. So uh, the International Space Station mission control team will go back into their nominal configuration where they are just monitoring the space station. And the team here in Hawthorne will continue monitoring uh, the return flight.